Hey everyone, today we've got another fun video planned because we're doing another body armor test. Now you guys may have seen or probably haven't seen the video I did before with the OmniProtects uh, Ballistic 3A panel. Uh, really they call it a 3A plus because it will stop a lot of the more advanced threats that 3A wasn't necessarily originally in, uh, designed or intended for. However, as threats have advanced, so too has technology. So OmniProtex has stepped it up. However, this is gonna be another step up from that. So this is their new OPX Ultra. So not only is it gonna stop everything that we did last time, but it should stop a couple more things. So we have a plethora of firearms to test it with, with a couple different types of ammunition. We've got our friend Kilroy here again that we're gonna hang this vest from. I've got another one here that I'm wearing just to get some time in it and see what it's like in the high 80 degree temperatures here that we've got going on in Oregon right now. Just to see how it feels comfort wise after an hour or so out here, solid. I've worn it at home, but doing it out here is a lot different. So without any further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing suited up. And then we're gonna test out the front side with pistol. We'll do the back side with some different rifle threats. And if we still can't stop it, we'll, uh, we'll just keep going until something makes it through. Um, real quick, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I do wanna say that these vests were provided at no cost by OmniProtex. So uh, do with that information what you will. Obviously, we're still gonna be shooting uh, a lot of different things into these uh, vests. So you will still see the good and the bad and any ugly, if there is any, of how these vests perform, but it's still worth you knowing. It is also worth noting that they did provide me with a Garmin chronograph to be able to velocity test uh, to get better data for this test. Now, obviously this is not an NIJ testing lab. However, we still wanna have as empirical of data for you to be able to extrapolate from as possible. So they did provide that as well. Again, do with that information what you will. We obviously care about full disclosure on this channel. So now without any further ado, let's go ahead, start pretty simply with 380 and uh, see what happens as we progress through these calibers. All right, so the testing we're gonna be doing out here today is gonna to be taking place at 12 feet or four yards. So we're gonna go ahead and see how everything performs from this distance. We might be starting small with 380, but we're doing something a little bit spicier. This is the Underwood Extreme Penetrator Plus P. They advertise it as a 1200 foot per second uh, velocity. We did do some velocity testing again, thanks to OmniProtex. Uh, so we know it's going pretty dang close to that. Let's go ahead and see what happens with a, a fairly spicy meatball right out of the gate. What do you think? All right, so as you can see on that camera there, we did catch it. Shouldn't be terribly surprising. And we had no penetration through. I can actually feel the slug in there. I can feel the um, deformation from inside there, but we did not have any penetration. I didn't expect there to be any, although I did bring some other expired vests from some other companies with some lower ratings. So we may experiment with that a little bit later just to show how impressive the performance of these vests actually are. All right, so next up we've got the Hornady, or sorry, the Underwood Extreme Defender, a nine, uh, 90 grain bullet again. Uh, this time it's saying also 1400 feet per second. Again, I know it to be going a little bit slower than that out of this Hudson H9, but let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, again, we're looking at you here on this camera. Obviously did not penetrate. We would not really expect it to. You can feel, uh, Obviously you see the impact here. You can feel where the material has kind of bunched up around it, but no penetration whatsoever. Again, this part should not be terribly surprising, but uh, let's try some uh, fatter calibers. Those of us familiar with Fallout New Vegas will no doubtably understand the power of the big iron. So I've got my single action army 1873 in 45 Colt. If you know body armor, you know this is really not gonna be much of a test. Well, we got to do it nonetheless, so let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, had our impact right there. No penetration. Again, I can feel the material pushed off to one side. Really, again, this is, this is the easy stuff, but still, we've got to go through this testing as is anyway, just to be able to fully appreciate what the actual rating of this body armor is. Let's go ahead and try 45 ACP. All right, 45 Colt couldn't make it through. How about 45 Colt automatic pistol, or sorry, automatic Colt pistol uh, out of my TSOS Raider in 45, obviously. 
Let's see what happens. Again, if you know ballistics, you know that this has really no chance. All right, again, no penetration whatsoever. Again, we would be really, really, really shocked if it was happening with these big, fat, slow calibers. Um, again, it's just going through the motions at this point. The interesting stuff is still to come. All right, next up we got 300, uh, 357 Magnum. This is some Fiocchi FMJ uh, in 100 and, it's 125 grain FMJ. So let's see how this does with 357. I'm gonna go for the bottom right. All right. All right, where do we impact? Looks like it went through, went through our little um, cummerbund strap there. And we can see no penetration. You can now see the zipper that's holding this uh, armor panel in place, but you can see there's no penetration there. Again, I can feel it in there. This thing's starting to feel pretty stiff from all that uh, absorption. Let's try uh, 10 millimeter and then we'll go to 44 Magnum. All right, next up, we've got the 150 grain 10 millimeter Extreme Hunter from Underwood. So again, solid copper projectile. Let's go ahead and see what happens. We'll go for the bottom left portion of the plate or for the panel. All right, this time we went through this side of the cummerbund. And again, we can see a lot of the white residue from Kilroy here from all the dry paint, but it did catch it, no penetration whatsoever. If you guys saw my last video, one of their smaller panels withstood, I think 11 rounds of that same 10 millimeter stuff. So again, not terribly surprising. Let's try to plug it nice and in the middle with a 44 Magnum. All right, now we've got some 44 Magnum. It's gonna be coming out of my Henry single shot rifle here. So considerably higher velocity than we would be getting out of a revolver, but uh, should be interesting. At least I definitely know it was interesting the last time we tried this. At least this time it didn't go flying off. All right, looks like we hit it nice and centered here. And even though it's blown out here, that's just from the friction of it rubbing. You can see the actual panel inside there. It did not penetrate through. You can feel the projectile in there. Again, this is just from the energy of the impact against this hard surface. You don't see any pass through there from a 44 Magnum. And again, it is caught in there. I will be tearing this apart at the end so we can actually see the slug in there, just so you don't have to take my word for it. But uh, let's, Let's go ahead and flip this thing around. Actually, you know what? No, we'll go ahead and do the 5.7 into this side, and then we'll do rifle and shotgun into the other side. So the first type of 5.7 we're gonna be using is the polymer tipped uh, 40 grain VMAX loaded by F uh, FN themselves. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Let's do right, let's see, make sure I'm actually going into a place that's covered. All right there. All right, so we can see the hole there, right above where we hit before. I think that was the, one of them, I don't remember. Um, do this side. So again, shouldn't be a surprise, no penetration with the 40 grain. Really, if anything, what we're about to get to is where we see level 3A fail in times in the past, not with this stuff, but with other panels that I've tested in the past, this is where we see stuff start to fail. All right, so now we've got the 27 grain lead free stuff from uh, FN. This stuff is coming out pretty quick. And again, this is where we start to see things fail. Other companies' products I've tested in the past failed with this type of ammunition, especially since this is an eight inch barrel out of this SBR, uh, the CMG Banshee Upper. Um, it's a little bit faster than it would be out of a smaller handgun barrel, like a five inch barrel. So this should be another pretty good test of it. The panel I tested previously handled this. This should have no problem. All right, so we hit lower down on it this time. It's even hard to see where the entrance was. I don't even see the entrance, honestly. It's so small going over where this Velcro panel is. But again, no penetration whatsoever. The thing we're gonna do next though, did defeat the previous iteration of Omni Protects. Let's see if this new version, if the Ultra can stop the red box 
armor piercing 5.7. So here we've got the red box green tip FN 5.7. This is what defeated the last OmniProtects armor that I tested, again, out of a longer SBR barrel. This stuff, again, is known to kill 3A. This is supposed to stop it. They even tested it with a PS90, which has a longer barrel than this. So let's see what happens. Uh, let's go right, right there. All right, so we had our point of impact pretty close actually to where the 44 Magnum hit. And again, we have some of the rubbing from where the uh, material's just rubbing against this hard surface, but we did not have any penetration. I can feel the projectile stuck in there. Um, let me shoot it into a less hit area here, just so you can get a better idea. We'll go, we'll go up here, just so you guys can get a better, better view of that and see the lack of penetration. So once again, we've got the green tip here and we'll try to put it into a more clearly visible part of the panel. Let's do a little bit higher up. Okay, that should be a little bit easier to see. Now we only hit just slightly higher, but again, no penetration. Let me, since we're done on this side anyway, let me go ahead and take this panel out. If I can, if the zipper's not compromised here from all the impacts. There we go. All right. So here's the front side, just to recap where we're at so far. These are the impacts on the back from where the 5.7, well, so this was the 44 Magnum. And you can see inside there that it did not actually penetrate. And at the end, we'll cut this open and pull all the slugs out. We had the first red box 5.7 hit up here. Again, it did not penetrate. Up here was the second one. Again, no penetration. It's hard to tell because again, the friction actually wore a hole in the outside um, kind of not vinyl, whatever that is, that's actually holding the plate in, but it did not actually go through the armor plate. So that is already extremely impressive. Well, let's see if it can stop an AK. All right, so now we're gonna step well outside of the territory of level 3A. We're gonna go to 762 by 39. Now, in all fairness, we're gonna be using the 196 grain subsonic 762 by 39 from Brown Bear. OmniProtex has told me that this uh, um, OPX Ultra will stop subsonic 3 in a blackout. You know what's cooler than 3 in a blackout? 762 by 39. So we're going to go ahead and do it out of my little Arsenal SBR here with this subsonic uh, 762 What do you guys think? That's a good sign. When you see that much energy transfer, i.e. the dummy moving around, and the panel moving around, that usually implies that it caught it. Let's see. All right, we've got our impact there. I can feel a lot of de deformation. And again, we have the rubbing from the, sorry, bugs everywhere. We've got the rubbing from the friction against here, but we did catch the slug in there. That is, Pretty damn impressive. Again, we'll pull this out so you guys can see that I'm not just BSing you here um, at the end, but that is freaking ridiculous. Let's try something a little bit bigger bore. All right, next up, we're gonna step up to 12 gauge. I've got some SMB seller and below double up buck. This is a nine pellet double up buck. We're gonna be doing it out of my uh, Stoger double defender here or double defense. Yeah, double defense over and under 12 gauge. What do you guys think? And if you know body armor testing, you know what the outcome will be, but it doesn't make it any less fun to do. Oh, okay. Top barrel first, or bottom barrel first. And there's the top barrel. Now, those of you less uh, familiar with shotguns will say, that should have spread out all over the place. But again, we're four yards from the target. So about a four inch group is about what we're expecting. That means we had nine 
32 caliber projectiles all impacting in a very small area and it did again catch it all we will pull it apart again so you don't have to take my word for it not terribly surprising 12 gauge is really actually not that incredibly hard to stop at least in this form let's try it slug all right so we're sticking with this double defense here but now we're switching to a cellar and bellet one ounce slug we'll start with the bottom barrel since that's actually the first one to fire here helps if i actually get it in the hole ladies okay so safety off and we'll do right there what do you think that's a really big hole it's about a 12 gauge size hole and as you can see there's no hole on the back let alone a 12 gauge size hole so that caught it there is a significant amount of deformation around that slug but it did indeed catch it pretty cool all right so it stopped everything we expected it to stop so let's have a little bit of fun all right so now we're just gonna have fun i haven't had a chance to shoot my vz61 scorpion in a while let's go ahead and just dump a 20 round mag now this is just fmj uh because I'm too cheap, honestly, to shoot a 20 round mag full of the Extreme Penetrator uh, plus B stuff. So we're just gonna do some of this FMJ and we'll just dump straight into this panel, just kind of spreading the love around. Sorry, at the front sight's easy to lose. Let me, uh, it's hard with the can on. Hard thing is that plate's getting so scrunched up now. You can't really, and I'll just dump it into the middle, I guess. All right, 20 rounds. Now, one thing you'll notice, we've got the impacts kind of all around over here, but the, the vest itself is really scrunching in from catching all of those impacts. So as long as we kept, as long as we kept all the rounds, yeah, let me just undo this side. As long as we kept the rounds on the panel, we should have stopped them all, and we did. We just again have some friction rubbing right in there. That stopped it all. Let's go ahead, again, this is super, super compromised. Let's go ahead and send something through that we know will make it through like a supersonic 7.62.39. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up with the AK again, but now I've got some Golden Tiger 123 grain FMJ. This stuff is gonna be moving in excess of 2,000 feet per second, so this should go through. I don't like to finish an armor test without it actually penetrating, so let's go ahead and do this, and then we'll talk about the results. Yeah, you can see the lack of movement in the plate or in the panel usually means it went straight through. All right. Wait, did I even hit? Or, oh, there it is. There we sailed nice and straight through. Let's go ahead and pull this out. There is that 76 by 2 by 39 that just dipped right on through. Bring it over to this camera to maybe see better. 762 by 39 supersonic, just zipped straight through. And you can see in these areas, again, where it's rubbed out, it'll be hard to see. Oh, <laughs> there's, uh, there's one of the 380 projectiles. It was just sitting on the surface on the front here. So as soon as I pulled the vest out, it just fell right out into my hand, but uh, that's pretty funny. All right, let's get into the shade and we'll recap our results. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about these vests and the results that we saw. Now, to many of you who have seen a lot of other ballistic testing uh, on YouTube, some of those, those results will not be very surprising. Again, stopping things like 45 Colt, 45 ACP, easy peasy, no brainer. However, things like 
Extreme Penetrator plus P380, some of the more other uh, nine millimeter and 10 millimeter Underwood. Uh, that is a little bit more impressive. And then to me, especially that Redbox 5.7. That Redbox 5.7 has zipped through every other 3A panel I have ever tested. Now, again, that's because this is more than just a 3A vest. This is actually what they would call like a 3A plus and actually really even above that. Because again, it can stop that. It can stop the nine millimeter Civic Duty, stuff that has been known to penetrate other lesser 3A vests and panels in the past. And as I alluded to earlier at the beginning of the video, the reality is the NIJ was set up at a time where 44 Magnum was a very common caliber that people like law enforcement right, might run into when they're working their job. However, times have changed quite a bit in the 30, 40 years since those were the days. So there's other threats that you have to deal with now. And if the manufacturer of your body armor is still thinking in 1980s, uh, you know, zeitgeist, you're not gonna be prepared for many of the threats that you might run into. So having a company like OmniProtects, who's willing to look at that NIJ rating and say, hey, I see that, we'll definitely accommodate that. But let's also cover the things that you're actually likely to run into. Things like 5.7, some of the higher velocity of pistol calibers from nine millimeter, 10 millimeter, et cetera. Or even in this case, subsonic 300 blackout and 762 by 39. That to me is a company that's willing to say, hey, we're not just gonna fit the contract to be able to sell to law enforcement and other agencies. Let's actually do what can be done to protect people that are using our products. So to me, I really respect a company like OmniProtects who is willing to go above and beyond the actual requirements needed on the market to actually give them what they would need as opposed to what they just think they would need. So I have a lot of respect for you know, people like Amir with uh, OmniProtects who is just willing to take that extra step and recognize, hey, just because it's been good enough for this period of time doesn't mean we can't be doing better. So really, really like what this company is doing, hence why I emphatically recommend their products. Now, uh, things like this are not cheap. However, the best rarely is. And I mean, the best is gonna be my subjective term. Obviously you can look at other testing across the internet and make that determination for yourself, but you'd be hard pressed to find panels that can stop what this thing stopped. Now, as far as the actual design of the vest itself, I think that these are really well thought through. So you do have to do some sizing to make sure that it's gonna fit you properly. So like this is a medium tall in my case. They actually measured me when I was at SHOT Show to figure out what my size was. While other companies might have adjustability and kind of do more of a one size fits all, having the actual sized uh, vests and carriers is vitally important for actually having a comfortable way to carry around your body armor. I've been out here for well over an hour. It's, you know, in the high 80 degrees out here, which as someone who joined the Air Force, I'm a little bit more temp temperature sensitive than maybe some of you watching this video. And I've been perfectly comfortable wearing this for that period of time. Obviously, even if you're wearing this for even longer periods of time, walking the beat, sitting in your patrol vehicle, or just being a regular concerned citizen, you're still gonna want that comfort and the breathability of the material that they're using is excellent for that. It is also washable. So if you are out there sweating your guts out over long periods of time and extremely high temperatures, you can still maintain some level of personal hygiene, which I'm always a big fan of. Now, you'll have seen when I was uh, opening up the vest to be able to check for penetration, you have not only the Velcro cummerbund that allows you to really properly size it, but there's also a zipper on the side, which makes for easy donning and doffing, mostly doffing. So if someone does have to administer first aid to you, they're still gonna be able to get that vest out of the way to administer first aid. Because even if you do stop the rounds, there's a lot of rounds that we stopped today that if you were to still get hit by it, you could still be experiencing some sort of internal damage. Again, especially things like a 12 gauge slug, 7.62 by 39, that 44 Magnum out of a rifle, you're still probably not gonna have a great day. So by being able to very readily take these vests off, it's gonna be ideal. 
And again, as you can see, even with the level of protection that you get, these are still very low profile vests. So even if you look at me in profile, you can see that it's really not sticking that far off of my body. This is still something that's very readily concealable under you know, jackets, larger clothing, outerwear. So you can still maintain a very low profile while maintaining a very high level of protection. Again, higher protection than I have ever seen from a soft body armor like this on the market. It, again, it's extremely impressive. And again, I do have a um, expired 3A vest from elsewhere just so we can get a full appreciation for what this thing is able to stop if, if we so choose. So this is the Brown Bear Subsonic 76239. Again, it was soft by Omni Protects. Go right in the middle, which has not been shot yet. You can tell by how little that moved that not anything good happened there. In fact, I'm gonna be interested. That went through both sides. Holy sh That's what I call results. But again, it's just something that I find exceedingly impressive. And again, something that makes me very wholeheartedly recommend these OmniProtex products if you're looking for something to quite literally trust your life to. It is also worth mentioning on the side, even though it does kind of cummerbund together with the front and back, the way that this is designed to fit, if you have it sized correctly, you do have it fully covered on both sides. So again, as long as you're ordering the correct size and measuring yourself correctly, you will still get full coverage all the way around 360. So you've got the side protection as well as the front and back protection. And it does still come up pretty high on the back and still comes up high enough on the front to protect the vitals, but still allow me a full range of motion. I've actually worked out in this vest just to make sure I have a good range of motion doing kettlebell swings and other workouts. Still did not get in the way. So again, it's hard to say much else than that. Uh, it stops everything you would want it to stop and then some while also being very, very functional, very wearable. There's not much else to it besides that, guys. It's, it's an extremely, oh, and actually there is something else to it. This, this is one of the crazy things. So normally when you're looking at ballistic protection, you don't usually get stab protection. And if you're looking at stab protection, you don't usually get ballistic protection. This actually is also rated for stab resistance. It's pretty crazy. I'll have a link obviously to the website where you can look at the product information about these. Uh, the, they have done all the testing and certifications to be able to actually rate these on the scale for stab resistance. I don't have the, a joule meter to make sure that I'm doing the right level of pressure and testing out here. Uh, and I just don't have a very scientific environment out here. So I'm not going to test that level of it myself. I'll leave that to the professionals. But again, you can read all about that on their website. So you got the ballistic protection, you've got the stab protection. It's comfortable to wear. You got uh, more than adequate protection. Again, I, I don't know what else to tell you guys. So I do want to say thanks to my patrons for helping to make a video like this one possible. While well, OmniProtex did provide the vests and the chronograph at no cost to myself, the ammo that we tested is not necessarily always readily available and definitely not cheap when you find it. So because of the contributions I get over on Patreon, I'm able to still facilitate testing like this. So because of that, we post all our content over there early. Uh, we do some exclusive content. We do monthly live streams, although this last month I was sick and we had to skip this month, but we'll hit it again strong next month. Um, so if any of that stuff sounds interesting or you just wanna financially support the channel, definitely follow the links below over to Patreon. But anyway, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.